What is going on guys, you're watching Dev Dreamer and welcome to lesson 34 in our JavaScript series. In this lesson, we're going to be learning all about JavaScript functions. If you enjoy the content, don't forget to like and subscribe down below. Also be sure to ring that bell and choose all notifications so you never miss an update. Okay, so welcome back to lesson 34. This is going to be the first in a number of lessons on JavaScript functions. Functions are a huge part of JavaScript. Some would even put them above objects when it comes to mastering JavaScript. But one thing to keep in mind is that functions are objects. In fact, we refer to them as first class objects. And that basically means that anything we can do with objects, and of course we'll look at objects in detail a bit later on, we can do with functions. We can create a literal object. We can create a literal function. Objects can be stored in variables. Functions can be stored in variables. We can include properties and values inside objects, and we can do the same in functions. Remember, the data type for a function is an object. We learned that way back in our lesson on data types in lesson seven, I believe. The key difference between an object and a function is that with a function, we can call or invoke a function. Now, right now, that probably doesn't mean anything to you. So let's first understand what are functions and then we can understand what we mean by calling or invoking them. So functions are blocks of code that we can call or the correct term is invoke whenever we want. They're a key part to JavaScript's power and expressiveness. And in this first lesson on functions, we're going to learn all about how to write functions and their basic usage. So the first thing to note about functions is that they are first class objects. This basically means that they coexist with and can be treated like any other JavaScript object. They can be referenced by variables, declared with literals, etc., etc. So that's what functions are. They are blocks of code that we can call or invoke whenever we need them. So that's all about what functions are. Now let's take a look at how they can actually be created. So there are four main ways that we can create a function. Function declarations and function expressions. These are two of the most common ways to declare a function. And we'll be looking at function declarations in this lesson. Another way that we can create functions is by using arrow functions. Arrow functions were introduced to the language with the ES6 update. They're a cleaner and simpler way to declare functions, but they're not just there to look pretty. Arrow functions solve a very common problem for us when it comes to dealing with functions. And of course, we'll take a look at this when we look at arrow functions later on. The third way to create a function is a function constructor. Now, function constructors are very rarely used. Odds are you'll never use them. And so we won't be discussing this in a lot of detail. I will probably touch upon this later on just for completion, but we probably won't be going into it in a lot of detail. And finally, the fourth way to create a function is by using generator functions. Now, this way of creating a function can be rather complex. Essentially, generator functions allow us to create functions that can be exited and re-entered later, something we can't do with normal functions. So we'll look at these later on in detail. Okay, so that's enough theory then. So let's start then with creating a function declaration. So in here, I'm going to simply use the word function space. And now we need to name our function. So I'm going to call this function games. Next, we have a parentheses space curly braces. And inside here, we'll have our code that we want to call or invoke. So this is the basic syntax for a function declaration. We have the word function space. Then we have a name for our function. Immediately after the name, we have parentheses space and then curly braces. So inside this, I'm just going to console log a few things. So I'm going to say console.log Sonic the Hedgehog. And we'll do two more console logs. We'll say console.log Super Mario. And for the final game, let's go for Donkey Kong. Okay, so we've created our function declaration. So we use the keyword function, we name our function, parentheses, curly braces, and inside our curly braces, we have our code to be run. So how then do we actually call or invoke this? Because if we save, notice that nothing happens. We don't see this in the console. So note that simply creating a function doesn't actually run any of the code. To do that, we must call or invoke the function. So the way that we do that is outside of our curly braces now, we simply use the function name. So it was games. And then very important, we include the parentheses at the end. Now it's actually this parentheses here that is responsible for calling or invoking this function. If we simply said games like this and let's save, nothing happens. Once again, very important to know, it's the parentheses that actually invoke the function. So let's save this now. And now you see in our console, we have our three games, Son of the Hedgehog, Super Mario, and Donkey Kong. So this is great. We can call this whenever we want. 
So if we were to repeat this a few times and save, we get our console logs multiple times because this function is being invoked multiple times. And if we go back to one function call, our code is executed once and we get our console logs. So already then we can see a big advantage to using functions. Anytime we want to run a piece of code, we don't need to keep rewriting it over and over again. We can simply invoke the relevant function and that code will run. Now, another note about invocation is how functions can be invoked. Here, we've simply invoked our function manually, but the real beauty of functions is that they can be called dynamically. In other words, we can call functions based upon the user's button clicks or when the page loads, when a user hovers over an element and much more. These are known as events and we'll be looking at events in detail a bit later on. So as mentioned then, when it comes to invocation, it's important to note that we need the parentheses to invoke the function. As we saw, calling just the function name on its own simply refers to the function as a whole and does not run the function. So let me show you that by console logging games like this. In the console, we see a reference to that function, f is for function. We have the name of our function, the parentheses and our code block. Let's talk a little bit more about what we can actually include inside of our function. Remember, a function is simply a block of code that we can call or run. So anything we can write outside of a function, we can write inside of a function. So we can also create variables inside functions. So let's just go ahead and do that. So let's get rid of all this. And instead, we're going to say let title be assigned the value of, and this time let's just go for Zelda. And now we can console.log our title variable. And if we call our function again, we can see we get Zelda in the console. So this variable here is known as a local variable. In other words, it's local to this particular function. Local variables are only visible inside the functions that they've been created in. So for example, if we tried to console log title outside of this function, so we're trying to use this variable now outside of this function block, let's save. The console gives us an error. It says unquote reference error, title is not defined. And once again, that's because any variables that are declared inside of a function block are restricted to being usable only inside of that function block. We can't use them outside of the function block. So once again, this is known as a local variable. Now any variable declared outside of a function block or any other block for that matter is known as a global variable. So let's just put this above the function call. Doesn't really matter where we put it. But let's just say, let greeting be assigned the value of hey there. And then down here, let's console.log greeting, let's save. And we get hey there in the console. So we can use this variable because it's a global variable. And so since it's global, it's accessible globally or everywhere. So we can even include that variable inside of our function. Save this and we get Zelda and hey there. Now all this, so local variables and global variables, let's just put a quick note in here, global variable. This is all to do with something called scope. We'll look at the specifics of scope in a few lessons time. We'll dedicate a whole lesson to it because it is very important. But for now, I just wanted to introduce you to it so you understand how variables work when it comes to functions. Now, functions can also be anonymous, that is without a name. So up here, let's just get rid of this for now. And I'm going to say let button be assigned the value of document dot query selector. And what we're doing here is we're working with something called the document object model or DOM for short. We'll be learning all about the DOM in future lessons. But for now, what we're doing here is we're trying to select something from our document. So if we go to our index.html file, you'll see we don't have anything here apart from the title. So down here, I'm just going to say button with an ID of button and we'll just say click me. OK, so we've got a button. And now in here, in single quotes, we can reference that just like we'd reference this in CSS. So we're going to say hashtag button. OK, now what we can do, let's just get rid of all this now. Okay, now what we can do is we can say button dot add event listener. So we mentioned events very briefly earlier on. These are things such as click, hover over, etc, etc. What we're doing here is we're saying take this button, which is a reference to our button right here, and add the event listen to it of a click. So we say comma, and here now we actually have our function. So I'm going to say function. As mentioned, we don't need a name. We don't need any parameters. We'll look at what that is a bit later on. We've got our curly braces inside here let's just console log sonic so what we have here then is we have an example of a function okay this right here there it is right there it's exactly the same as the other function we looked at except it doesn't have a name you'll see why in just a second 
So what we've done here then is we've created a button. We've created a reference to that button, stored it in the variable BTN or button for short. We've then added an event listener to this button of a click. So when we click this, we're going to do something. And that something is this function here, this anonymous function. We call it an anonymous function because it doesn't have a name. So if we click this, we get Sonic in the console. If we keep clicking it, we'll get multiple Sonic calls in the console. So the point of showing you this, I know it's stuff that we haven't actually looked at in detail right now, we will later on, but the point of showing you this is that we can have functions that don't have a name. The only way for this type of function to be invoked is by an event handler. However, there is a way that we can create an anonymous function and still have a way of referring to it in our code. And that's by using a function expression. We'll look at function expressions in the next lesson. So guys, that's all about an introduction to functions and how to write functions by using function declarations. As mentioned, the next few lessons will be all about understanding functions as they really are a major part to mastering and understanding JavaScript. For now, let's go ahead and summarize this lesson. And let's just put our original function that we had on the screen. So our functions are blocks of code that we can call or invoke whenever we want. We saw that there are four main ways to create a function function declarations and expressions. We've covered declarations in this lesson. We'll look at expressions in the next one. Arrow functions, constructor functions, and generator functions. To create a function declaration, we simply use the word function, followed by a name, parentheses, and then finally curly braces. And it's inside these curly braces that our code to be run is placed. And finally, functions on their own do nothing. They need to be invoked or called in order for the code inside the function block to actually run. The way that we invoke functions is by using the function name followed by parentheses. Okay, so let's take a look at your tasks for this lesson. For task number one, I want you to create a function using a function declaration called my name, and then invoke the function to log your name to the console. And then for task two, I want you to invoke the function multiple times. So it should be nice and straightforward. Go ahead and pause the video, try this out, and when we come back, we'll take a look at the answers. Okay, so how'd you get on then? Let's see. So for task number one, we need to create a function using a function declaration. So we use the keyword function, and this function should be called my name. So we say function space my name. Then we need a parentheses, very important. We need a parentheses after the name, space curly braces. So this is our basic shell for our function. Inside this, we need to console log our name. So I'm going to say console.log and then my name. And then for task one, we need to invoke this function. Remember, the way that we invoke a function is by using the function name. So we're going to say my name and then very importantly, include the parentheses at the end. So let's go ahead and save. And sure enough, we get Amit printed to the console. Okay, so that should be nice and straightforward. And then for task number two, we need to invoke the function multiple times. So again, nice and easy. All we need to do is call our function or invoke our function multiple times like so. so. Let's save. And we get our multiple function call in the console. So guys, well done on completing that task. That's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we're going to be learning all about the other most common way to create functions, which if you recall, were function expressions. So be sure to tune in. Don't forget to comment, share, like, and subscribe down below, and I'll see you on the next one.